Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming. I'm Rocio. Uh, Andrea and Jocelyn are part of the diversity and accessibility team. And uh, uh, we're here with uh, the winners of the accessibility mention at USAR 2021. Natalia, uh, Luis, Virginia, and Paul. To start with, uh, I would like to ask you to introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit of what your presentation was about. Hi all, my name is Natalia Morandeira. I am a researcher in Buenos Aires, Argentina. I'm a biologist, an ecologist. Um, my presentation was about obtaining reproducible reports on um, a wildfires, uh, handling special data on thermal hotspots and obtaining reports um, motivated by the, um, the fires in the Paraná River Delta in, in 2020. Hi, I'm Luis Revilla. I'm a bioinformatician doing my PhD on Barcelona. And my talk was about the package submission process on CRAN and, and the con common problems and the common uh, state of, for new users. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having us here. Paola and I are here representing the whole team. We're actually six authors here. And we presented the results of the first Latin American R survey use. Uh, explain a little bit of what are the good things of using R in Latin America, what are the bad things, and what we can do to, to improve the use for our users. We would like to start asking you what was your motivation for making an accessible presentation for USR and if this, that was something new to you. Well, my first motivation was that I was uh, participating, collaborating in the organization of the conference and I saw that uh, accessibility was taken seriously and was being discussed by all the teams and um, also guidelines were provided for, for the authors. So I wanted to follow that guidelines, uh, guidelines and to include uh, all the people that, had a uh, that would have a barrier to attend my presentation. And I was also moved by a blind person that um, is, uh, was involved in the participation because in the organization of the conference, because in, in one of the first meetings of, of the team, uh, we were discussing on the slides during several minutes. And after several minutes, she write in the chat uh, of the meeting, I can't see that, uh, that chart. So, well, <laughs> I think that I, I, I cried <laughs> in, in that moment. And uh, sometimes we don't even realize uh, who we are we are leaving behind so uh, she, she taught me uh, why it's important to to include uh, all the people we can yes well we were also motivated by the organization who did an amazing job trying to to make this an accessible event but we're actually all of the authors are part of the our ladies community so we have in mind the idea of trying to promote inclusiveness in gender and so we wanted to expand that to people who have other needs like you just mentioned people who may be blind or deaf whose which conference materials have not been yet so accessible for them so we were very much motivated to do so and also as part of the Latin American community, we wanted to encourage people to open the door for other non-English speakers. So it was great that the conference organizers allowed us to present in our language, giving the resources necessary for English speaking persons to understand, but also for Spanish people person to understand. So that was great. We would also like to know uh, from you uh, if making this slides accessible, these presentations accessible, uh, represented any challenge for your workflows? And how did you learn to do this? Or what did you have to change in your way of working to do this extra step? Well, uh, I, I had never prepared a Saringham presentation before. So uh, that, that was the first thing I, when I had to learn. I, I, was, I had the help of 
uh, a previous uh, meetup of Our Lady Sao Paulo. I also um, had help uh, from the Clinica de Charlas channel in the Latin Hour Slack. And also a colleague was learning with me how to do prepare a Sarangam presentation because she, she also submit uh, uh, an accessible presentation to the conference. The second one was how, what a proper alt text is. So uh, for example, um, saying figure one dot PNG is not a proper alt text. You had to think uh, what, uh, what, what you had to say to write what type of chart it is, what is showing the, what are the axes showing, what, uh, what you are plotting so any reader can interpret the, the text um, and take their own conclusions. And I had some previous experience on, the, on that um, because of the translation of the Teach and Touch Together book uh, by Greg Wilson, that is a Metadocentia and, and Our Ladies project. And the, sec the third thing I had to learn is how to add um, English and Spanish captions in my YouTube uh, video. Because as, as Virginia said, I wanted to, to make my video accessible for English speakers and also for Spanish speakers and for non-native non English speakers. And also that gave confidence for me because if I, my, pronunci my English pronunciation was not the best one, well, an English, spe an English uh, speaker can read the captions and that would be fine. Yeah, for me, it was also the, the first time doing a Charingan presentation. And well, I learned from online and the big net and other resources. And, but I think it was easier uh, for, thanks to, to the guidelines that also clarified a lot how to do. Um, but I also had to learn about the providing alternative text because, well, I kind of use that for social media that I manage a couple of organizations, but for presentations, it was different because I would need to describe the, the access, the content, and also as my plots depended on a database, well, on a, an analysis, if I changed something, I needed to update the, the, cap, the, the text. At the end, I just decided to leave that until the end. And, and that was easier to do that instead of doing it every time I run again the analysis. Um, uh, the next follow-up question uh, would be if you had uh, some feedback from friends or from people in the community, where did you get help to, to finish polishing your presentations? I had already mentioned that, but uh, it was in the uh, the Charles uh, channel. In the uh, that is a channel uh, we created in the in the uh, Latin R Slack to discuss uh, presentations and abstract submission for this conference and for other conferences, and also with a colleague and with the Our Ladies um, meetups. Latin R is a, a Slack uh, gathering uh, our users from Latin America. Uh, that is also that also um, is the support of the Latin R conference. And uh, there we, for example, we share the um, the, the guideline the um, the requirements of, for extra submissions for several conferences. And um, we. Uh, have provide feedback, feedback and receive feedback on the abstract, the slides, the videos. So it's it's great. It's a great space. We actually weren't alone. As mentioned before, we were six in the team, so we get a lot of feedback from each other. We we all had different ideas and different point of views. And once again, I cannot leave out to mention that Jocelyn Chavez was part of our team and she was key in trying to help. Uh, to change some things in the Saringan presentations and actually being able to portray things in an accessible way. That was also great. But as the girls just mentioned, the Clinica de Charlas channel was also a place to help each other with the English. We also corrected that when submissions had to be done in English and not in Spanish. So 
it's definitely uh, recommended to join if someone wants to present and get some feedback. I didn't have a Slack channel to ask for feedback, but I posted uh, my presentation, my slides on Twitter to see if someone volunteered some information or some comments, but I didn't have any answer or comment. But I presented or showed my slides to my sisters, two of my sisters, and they provided, OK, hide this slide or this other one. And they were very kind to, to follow up more or less my slides and my presentation. And I also shared my slides with Stephanie Putlan from the manager, community manager from Air Open Sci, and she also provided uh, a comment about making clear some slides to where data was drawn. And that's all the feedback I got about my, my presentation. Well, I also tried a lot of times to record myself to make a good presentation, but that's just my, my own reinforcement. Uh, now, based on your experience, uh, we are curious about uh, what did you like the most about the process of making accessible presentations? I like the, the learning process a lot and the fact that finally a blind person could attend my talk. Yes, uh, for my slides, I focus a lot on the message I want to deliver. I think that on other slides, I just already have the thing that I want to present and then I, or the plot I want to present and then I create the content around that. This, this presentation was the other way around. I wanted to get, to give a message and then I created all the plots and all the slides to, to, to give that message and that, to give that message, I also had to make the slides accessible. So it was like the, the main point to, to give this message to, to make it accessible to all. And well, that was what I liked most to, to give this message. Um, I think uh, all the team share the, this feeling of, of uh, our, our uh, pleasure to, to to work as a team, uh, we learn from each other, but uh, it was also great to learn about accessibility and use what we learn to improve the material and, and understand the, the importance of, of it. Uh, it, it, it was, um, we, we also feel that uh, we were uh, helping to improve the the inclusiveness in the conference and that motivates us to to work hard on the presentation and what we did and do you have any advice for people who have never thought about making accessible presentations but would like to to start i think that the most important recommendation is or, or advice is uh, to think of uh, your possible audience all your possible audience and Put yourself in their shoes so uh, try to think what efforts are they doing to attend uh, your talk and what information do they need to understand your content and also sometimes it, it might be um, laborious to write a text or to learn saringan but those uh, several people who have more barriers than you uh, are doing greater efforts to, to attend your talk. So you, uh, it's nice if you can help them to inc and, and include them. Yeah, I would say that don't try to, to mark all the check boxes at, at first, because if you look that way, it's daunting, all the things that you could do, and it's a long list. And it's also, it's not a checkbox list that you need to tick and then you are done with accessibility. But I start small and you can start like providing easier plots to interpret, like providing, uh, I like to provide several uh, aesthetics uh, with the same information to make it easier to distinct like points from different color and also different shape to make it easier for people that have some kind of visibility problems to dis distinguish between them. And so you can start that small with each plot, making it easier to to see and understand for other people. And from there, you can build up and provide more captions, uh, alternative text, or other uh, useful things that make it easier to follow you on your presentations. 
uh, we think that the, the first thing to do is to put ourselves in the in other shoes to, to understand uh, what we have to do to include them. Uh, in our case, it was uh, having people to guide us in, in the field of accessibility was an advantage, but uh, you also have a lot of resources uh, and, and recommendations. For example, you can look at the user accessibility blog post that help us a lot. And the other thing is, uh, is this is the first time you try to improve your materials or what you do. Uh, you can try to change things one, one thing at a time and get feedback from, from the community and from the people you are trying to, to include. So you can start doing legal things, and, but in a, in a good way. Thank you so much. I wanted to ask you a, a little uh, something extra is that we cannot help but notice seeing that uh, everyone here is a non-native English speaker. Do you think this has something to do with the fact that uh, when asked to make an accessible presentation, uh, you, you sat and thought about it with careful? Uh, do you have any comment about this? Probably because we are, we are uh, aware of our barriers because of the of the language. Um, some of us here also because of being in in low income countries, and um, also because of the communities in which we uh, participate: our ladies, um, Latinar, Metal Sense, yeah. I was about to say the same thing that Natalia said. Uh, as non-English speakers, we're also we're always being imposed these barriers of writing academic things in English or or making our ways uh, in the conferences. Most of them being in English, and this was actually, I believe, one of the first times besides Latin R, which is in another uh, language, which also allows abstracts in English but there, there is some diversity there and inclusion. But generally, most conferences are in English. And actually, uh, as part of our initiative in the survey we performed, we asked if people knew about some of the conferences and have participated in them. And most of them didn't even knew about them, less participate there. And of course, English was some of the barriers, time, the cost of traveling was a huge barrier as well. So, so yes, this was a, like a great idea. And as Paul said, it was an experience we could not, not participate since it was online. So yes, I believe mean, many of us took this and, and wanted to, to make it the best we could. And accessibility was one of the main goals of the conference. So yes. I guess a, a last question would be, Will you continue to the accessibility practices in future presentations? Do you think that you will use some of those things, all of those things? Do you think that there's room for improvement in accessibility in your own practices? Uh, I try to use uh, accessibility and sharing and presentations in my future conference uh, presentations. Maybe for teaching, uh, when I uh, for teaching, I have all my slides already prepared, so I try to change, uh, as Paul say with uh, or and Luis, uh, one by a time, <laughs> and and sure for social network posts like Twitter, it's very easy to add alt text, so I I'll do it, yeah, surely. Yeah, I plan to continue providing these accessibility features. Uh, I have a workshop um, uh, on September that I also try to, to organize and prepare the slides with Charingan to, to include alt text. And well, on other presentations, I will try also to provide all the features. One thing I would like to improve is providing uh, also the captions for my video if there is a recording because I was all, um, conscious about my pronunciation on my talk. And I think it would also ease my pain and to and make it easier for all to understand myself and, and also to, to check if my pronunciation is right. 
Uh, but yeah, I will continue using these accessibility practices. Yeah. Just to thank you all for your time again, and to, to, and I I I repeat what you all have been saying. I, I do believe this is a a, sm a small, not necessarily a small, extra step that is essential to put ourselves outside of the center for 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 uh, for a while. And and uh, and uh, we are so glad that this was a, a nice step, a first step for for many of you. So thank you so much for your time and your effort and work. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Uh, Great. My thanks to you for all the efforts also. Thank you. Muchas gracias. <laughs> gracias a ustedes. <laughs>